Shalom, Shalom. Call Allah Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. Peace and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is the book of Sirach, the 32nd chapter, another uh, edition of Weekly Wisdom. This is volume 7. We're going to the wisdom scriptures. And break it down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rechak Wadash. Now, this 32nd chapter of the book of Sirach, otherwise known as Ecclesiasticus, is going into, or the first few verses are going into etiquette. And uh, the other verses go into, you know, various topics and different things in the, in the application of wisdom. All right, because wisdom in and of itself is the application of knowledge. All right. Knowing when to do what, you know, knowing when to hold peace, knowing when to uh, speak up, knowing how to, uh, you know, react in certain situations. All of that is under the umbrella of wisdom. I mean, Babylon, the great America, we've been taught a lot of greedy, selfish ways, you know, and we've been made. You know, this place has corrupted us. It is through the Holy Spirit that we've been washed in this preaching of this word through the spirit of Yahweh Shai upon our apostles, the elders and the brothers on down, that we've been cleaned up. All right. But we also have certain impurities on us still. So we have to um, always keep in mind our conduct amongst the brothers and... You know, walking on eggshells, but at the same time, uh, when we consider these things, you know, you also want to be able to um, not be uptight, but also just consider, you know, because walking on eggshells makes it seem like you're always uptight. And, you know, sir, in, in reality, we do have to walk on eggshells in this faith at times, but you want to also have the balance of understanding that we we do slip up at times but that's why we go back into the scriptures into the wisdom of the scriptures to learn how to become better men all right because i could tell you when i went back into this chapter i was cut all right it's certain things and, and a lot of times we do get cut reading the scriptures still to this day is there's things that we could be improving on all right none of us are perfect we're striving to become perfect it's only going to fully happen when Yahweh Shai comes back. But going into it, Sirach 32 and 1. If thou be made the master of a feast, lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them and so sit down. Right. You know, uh, certain high holy days or just gatherings. It doesn't have to be a high holy day, but a gathering amongst the brothers. You know, especially in these last days, we have limited resources. We may be called to, you know, um, have a gathering of brothers to feed brothers, which is a blessing, you know, whether it be a small or a large gathering of the Akium, you know, that's a blessing. And the Hawashai is dwelling there, you know, as it is written. Where two or more, let's see. Two or more gathered there I am in the midst of them. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Let's see if I can find it. Yep. Uh, Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, and that name is Yahawashai, there am I in the midst of them. See? So that's where Yahawashai dwells amongst the brothers. And how we treat each other is as though we're doing it unto Yahweh Shai himself, you know, and we are a family at the end of the day, but families have issues sometimes. So we want to always be mindful of how we treat each other, man, because that's one of the major tests in this faith. Uh, certain brothers are sent into your life to test you as well, you know, and sometimes we test each other's patience on different levels, man. And, what you know, we may not be doing it on purpose. You know, we may not be doing it, 
you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get on, on the brother's nerve, but sometimes we just all come from different walks of life and it just, just, just happens, you know, and it ultimately happens according to the will of the heavenly father, because he wants to test us to see if there's a man that he, he's not like you. He's the completely opposite of you, but yet he still loves you. How shy? We got to love that man and vice versa. You know, we all have our pet peeves and things. But, you know, we got to look out for one another, man. All right. And, uh, you know, that's like anything, man. You want if you're on a work site, you know, you're working. You want to be able to rely on the person that's with you, you know, especially with construction jobs, for example. You don't want to have just anybody working next next to you that you can't trust because danger is, is, is around the way. You know, so the same applies with this knowledge. But reading on. And when thou hast done all thy office, take thy place, and that thou mayest be merry with them, and receive a crown for thy well ordering of the feast. You see? So that means to serve one another, you know, take diligent care. And before you get to see, if, you, if you've been in charge of, you know, a, a, a gathering of the brothers, then make sure that everybody is taken care of. And then, you know, t- take a seat down and then, you know, join in the brother in the, in the, uh, in the brotherly love, man. Or that is all brotherly love, all right? Serving one another. Hey, Yahweh Shai, wash the disciples' feet, man. And this is the Lord of Lords. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The Son of God, man. But yet, he had the humility and the wherewithal and the spirit. You know, he is the embodiment of wisdom, of course. So he, he understood that this was about humbling himself. Just as we are to understand, you know? So we have to follow our Lord in that sense. Speak thou that art the elder... That art the elder, for it becometh thee, but with sound judgment, and hinder not music. Right. So, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes brothers might be listening to something. Uh, you don't want to, you know, brothers be vibing, and you come in shouting and screaming, you know. It's just uh, spiritual advice in, in, this, uh, in this particular verse. You know, so being, you know, speaking with, with sound judgment, pour not out words where there is a music, musician and shoot not forth wisdom out of time. See, and that, that goes into um, what I had mentioned in the beginning, that there's a time to speak. There's a time to keep silence. You know, there's a and then ultimately got to follow the spirit. We got to follow the spirit. And it goes like that at, at camp as well. You know, just like because it is not this truth a song. Is not this truth a song being sung? You know, so hey man, when it's when the music is, you want to be in tune, you want to be, you know, when when the time comes, hey, every instrument has a time to to, to play in the song, you know. But we also want to be mindful of when we speak, and and that's what it said here: shoot not forth wisdom out of time, you know, because you be be saying something. It's a wise thing you're saying. You know, or you you want to share some, you know, something that the Lord brought to you. But ultimately, there's a time and a place to do it. You know, but reading on the concert of music and the banquet of wine is as the signet of carbuncle set in gold. I read that in the GNT. It says music at a banquet where wine is served is like a ruby set in gold. Good music and good wine and emerald set in gold. Yep. A signet of an emerald set in a work of gold. So is the melody of music with pleasant wine. Yeah, this is a beautiful thing, man. The spiritual builds with the brothers, you know, having a yayan and everything in moderation. You know, but that's one of the greatest feelings, being amongst the brothers, enjoying uh, music, you know, enjoying a good time. You know, that's just these are things that that happen, man, that that. And the balance of the of the ministry is nothing wrong with it, you know. But reading on, speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Yep. So you know the younger men like like myself, you know. Really, especially when you're amongst elders, it's supposed to be uh, be more quick to hear than to speak. You know, be more quick to listen. And to take heed than to speak. Because that's a sign of respect. 
Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth, and yet holdeth his tongue. You see? Be as one that knoweth, and yet holdeth his, hold his tongue. And the GNT, come to the point and say it all in a few words. Show that you are well informed, but stay quiet. You see? So there's a time and a place to where you could break, th break something down or bring out your precept, whatever it is. Or bring out your point or just, you know, anything, information you might have, a testimony, whatever it is. But, you know, comprehending much in few words, you know, keeping it straight to the point. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. What that reminds me of was the dude um, element. There's an old video of the apostles and this this uh, individual element. He was like right next to the apostles up in the mix. And, and, and when you look at the video, especially knowing what we know now that he fell out, uh, he ended up being a demon. You know, he was basically making himself equal with them in a certain sense. And that was off. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Right. You know, and, and this is something that we, we, we learn more as the days go on, you know. And that's why the scriptures are here. Instruction is needed because. Without we have been without this our whole lives, man. The uh, you know, my majority of my life, I wasn't in the truth, so that's 20 some odd years, however many 25 26 years of just being a fool, man. <laughs> you know, not knowing anything, not knowing the wisdom. So that takes time to unlearn those things. So, this is all. For the edification's sake and just to uh, to remind uh, each other of the ways. Uh, uh, these are ancient ways, man. And we are striving and really, Lord's will, we're the elect. We're ancient spirits. So we're coming back into the knowledge of who we really are. And this is the ancient way. Respect, honor, integrity. And this isn't something that just happens overnight. But this is why lessons like this go out so that we can be reminded of it. And as I'm as I'm preaching it, I'm learning it. Because the best way to learn something is also to teach it, see? And that's why, you know, the apostles be telling us to put out our three lessons. There's an order put for our three lessons a week. And, uh, hey, if the Spirit is on us, to do more. Because teaching is another way to uh, solidify things that we've learned. So Rock 32 and 10. Before the thunder goeth lightning, and before a shame-faced man shall go favor. Beautiful. Yep. So, A, you know, you see that lightning and, you know, you might hear that thunder and then the lightning, right? Or sometimes, yeah, no, no, you see the lightning and then you hear the thunder. That's how it goes. You see the lightning crash. You know, but what does it say? And uh, I'm going to read it in the... Uh, GNT, the reputation of a modest person goeth before him as lightning before thunder. You see? As lightning before thunder. Okay? See the flash and then you hear the thunder. Because light travels faster than sound. See? So, you know, the same thing with a, with a man that's meek. You know, his reputation will go abroad for... for um, learning these things and applying these things you'll be known as a brother that uh is meek all right has integrity that can you can speak to about certain things right rise up at times and be not the last but get thee home without delay right and, and in terms of these feasts you know you want to be you know everybody's leaving the brother's house and hey, you the last one up in there Still drink. Hey, pass me that yayan. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's winding down. Brothers got work the next day. Brothers got responsibilities the next day. But you just turned up. See, that's 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 called reading the room, man. All right. You know, it's, hey, brother, you ain't got nothing to do tomorrow. <laughs> you over here uh, ready to just go have an all nighter? Hey, brothers got the hey, brothers got things to do, man. You know, brothers have other responsibilities now in the kingdom. Hey, we're going we to be able to spend all types of time. But, you know, it's just a it's just a this is an aspect of having class, man. All right. Especially, you know, you're not in your own place. All right. 
dare take thy pastime and do what thou wilt, but sin not by proud speech. You see? Right, and, and uh, basically, you know, when you get to your house, then shit, you could do what you want to do there. You could, you know, if you want to have another few drinks, then hey, that's on you. As long as you can handle what you got to handle the next day through the spirit of the Lord, then hey, do what you got to do. All right, but, you know, and it, and it talks about uh, proud speech. All right, so we want to be mindful of the things we say. All right, because, you know, as the scriptures talk about this, the, the tongue is, is uh, let me let me see if I could grab it in James, the fifth chapter. You know, and I'm in Salaki, if I'm a little long winded, I'm trying to work on that. So forgive me if I'm long winded. But that's just something that, you know, hey, I, I, I became long winded, um, you know, learning that in this place. But the best thing is to just keep it straight to the point. You know, we could. uh going to certain tangents because really this is spirit but you know we don't want to just be blabbering on so let's read this james what is it three yes yeah, james the third chapter james three and five even so the tongue is a little member and boast of great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. You see, so the tongue, hey amen, the tongue, it, the scriptures what we just read, it's called a world of iniquity. Let me see what the GMT says for that. In essence, the, the tongue can lead to, has, has led to, and, and will lead to many, many people's downfalls. And we don't want to be of that, uh, in that group of people. That they cannot control their tongue. You know, because the same scripture, I believe, if it's not this one, we might have to read 30. Uh, no, nah, yeah, it might be 32, but it mentions the tongue. But it is the James, this is James 3 and 6. And the tongue is like a fire. This is in the GNT. And the tongue is like a fire. It is a world of wrong. But that goes to show you that a world is, is, is just a, really a system or... You know, a particular thing There's a world of there's a world of stones, the world of bird watching, the world of um, NASCAR drivers, the world of basketball, the world of soccer. Right. These are worlds within the world. So that goes to show you that when it's when a, when a word world comes up, it doesn't necessarily mean every single body. All right. Because the tongue in and of itself is, is described as a world here. It is a world of wrong occupying its place in our bodies and spreading evil through our whole being. It sets on fire the entire course of our existence with the fire that comes to it from hell itself. Yep, and hell represents the death and the grave. Okay? Not a place where you go to burn forever. Okay? So... You know, um, going back to this scripture, so Rock 32 and 12, there take thy pastime and do what thou wilt, but sin not by proud speech here, because proud speech leads to demise, because the Lord hates pride. All right, and for these things, bless him that made thee and hath replenished thee with his good things. Yeah, who's that? Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Thank the Lord, man. He's the one that made us, He's our creator. All right, and that's an. Um, what is that? Psalms uh, is either 96, somewhere in the 90s. Let me see if I can just find it. Yep. Psalms 95 and 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, our maker. And remember, Yahweh Shai is the one that the Heavenly Father used to create everything we see around us. So, you know, we have to praise him. We have to worship him. All right. And those that don't want to worship him. Hey, the Lord said those that would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. That's going to happen soon. All right. Lord's will, we could partake in that. 
All right. On the righteous end of it. So rock 32 and 14. Whoso fear of the Lord will receive his discipline and they that seek him early shall find favor. Yeah. And we seeking him early now before the time of trouble and also early going into, uh, you know, early in the day as well. You know, putting up prayers and, and so on and so forth, starting our days with the remembrance and the calling upon you of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, but that's all the fear of the Lord. That's discipline. All right. He that seeketh the law shall be filled where therewith. That's the best. It's really the best way to start our days, man. Is to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to praise Him. Uh, put up prayers. You know, we we do have our responsi our worldly responsibilities going to work, but we cannot forget the Lord, man, because remember, the Lord is the one that controls everything, whether we succeed, whether we make it home or not, you know, whether we get to our job and back home in one piece. So we ought to seek to please him. All right. That's why it says they that seek him early shall find his favor. All right. I shall find favor. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Yeah, hey, we go into these law, steps, and commandments, and you know, a, a, a lot of our people, man, they they want to they 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 claim to be Christians, they claim to be God fearing people, but when the laws come out, like the grape situation, you know, they get offended, man. They get offended at the law. All right, the offenses should come. Our offenses shall come. All right. And that's one of the offenses because that's an ancient way. You see, this world is, is a pussyfied world. And, you know, the American way has made the whole world soft and just stupid and just uh, irrational, man. You know, so, you know, they'll defend the ways of this world. They'll defend how things go all the upside down, the transformer agenda. But when the laws come out, you know, that a sodomite is supposed to be put to death. One that lays down with man, a man that lays down with mankind who's supposed to be put to death, they get offended at that. All right. When it, when the laws come come out on um, not eating abominable foods that they indulge in, they get offended at that. Right. They that fear the Lord shall find judgment and shall kindle justice as a light. Yep. So that's going into fearing the Lord again, you know, and and and. We, we want to see that judgment come forth. Okay, so we, we understand the Lord's judgment. We understand what is what is righteous. Okay, and that's the law, statute, and commandments. So, how about Shem Yahweh Shai? And that's what needs to be established on earth. All right. Yeah, in Proverbs 28, 5, it says, Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things, right? And part of that is understanding judgment. So when things happen, we don't get offended. Oh my God, what a tragedy. Yeah, it is a tragedy, but ultimately it's the Lord's will. So we can accept and wrap our mind around the things that happen because it's horrific things happen to our people. And if the Spirit of the Lord ain't with you, it, it, it'll 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 hurt you, man. You won't understand why is that happening. Why is it? Well, because it's judgment. I mean, don't you know, Lord's will. We endure until the end, and we aren't the examples of that judgment. Because there's always going to be examples of judgment. We ought to examine ourselves that we fall not into that lot. All right. Seventeenth verse: A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. See. Hey, men that fell out the truth, all right, men that, again, going into the Christian community, those that want to continue to indulge in abominable acts, hey, we tell them about how having a Christmas tree is idolatry, and they'll still defend it. Now, we got to take, we got to take Christmas back. So, you want to try to make something that's connected with idolatry and try to make it something for the Lord, you see? But they're all confused, man. They're through. Okay. Again, a sinful man will not be reproved, but find of an excuse according to his will. See? Okay. Look what it says in the GNT. Sinners have no use for correction and will interpret the law to suit themselves. See? Oh, that's done away with. And that's talking. Oh, a man with a man. Nah, that's talking about uh, a man with a boy. You know? Or they'll try to wrap. The, they try to make the, the law 
to to fit their wicked agenda. See? But the laws are straightforward, man. There's no getting around it. A man of counsel will be considerate, but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear, even when of himself he hath done without counsel. Yeah, man of counsel. And the, the, the best counsel is from the Akim, from Yahweh Shai, ultimately praying to the Lord and asking the Lord to, to direct our steps. All right. And a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. See? They, 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 don't, they don't consider, man. They just keep marching headlong into wickedness. Okay? And that's why these judgments are going to come forth. They that fear the Lord shall find judgment and shall kindle justice as a light. All right? So that's why the, hey, the, the the light is the knowledge of wisdom and understanding. It's being kindled, and that's why we're calling on we're calling for the Lord to bring justice. We understand what true justice is. All right, going back to the 16th verse, but now reading on 19th verse, do nothing without advice, and when thou has once done, repent not. Do nothing without advice, you know. Consult, yeah, hey, if if there's a shaky situation, you think, mm, I'm gonna just that's that's uh, that's not wise to just be rushing into things or just doing things without seeking counsel. Oh, hey, brother, you know, because sometimes you can't from the first person, you can't see what a brother who's looking at it from the third person view can see. OK, so that's why it's good to seek out counsel. Do nothing without advice. And when now has once done, repent not. Yeah. So when you make a move, really, you want to be able to make that move boldly. And confidently, all right, and not have to like try to take it back. And certain things, once you already made the decision, that's it. You know, it's set. Whatever is set in motion after you made that decision is set in motion. You see, go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall, and stumble not among the stones. You see, a lot of our people they would rather go into the way that they, they that they're gonna fall, man. They want to go that dangerous route and tempt the Lord, where they're gonna stumble. And perish. Be not confident in the plain way. Exactly. Okay. Be not confident in the plain way. That that's being over, that's being foolishly confident, full of yourself. You know. And hey, this is really the the way has been made plain through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. But a lot of men don't count the cost. They don't consider. You know. When they come into this thing, what what is it really going to? And even us, man, we thought, you know, we thought we knew what what this was all about. But as the time goes on, we're really learning more and more as the days go on and understanding more and more what we're a part of, you know. But ultimately, when we came into this, we had to take it very seriously. We had to take it very seriously. This is a vocation. This is the ultimate highest calling a man could be called for. So don't be confident in a plain way. You know, that's like the dude where they have those videos where he's winning the race and then he turns around and try to boast and brag. And then the dude second place end up cutting him anyways and up passing him. See, that was him being confident in a plain way because he thought he had it. All right. And beware of thine own children. You see. Yep. <laughs> beware of thine own children, man. Yeah, because that might seem like a walk in the park, too. But then you find out it ain't as simple as it looks. It might turn on you in the time of Jacob's trouble. See, so we got to be willing to depart with whatever it is, man. Now, we pray and hope that the Lord preserves us and our families, you know, but mentally we ought to be prepared to walk away from whatever it is in order to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And hopefully the Lord's will, he can maintain us to have us in the same mindset. And every good word, trust thy own soul, for this is the keeping of the commandments. You see? Okay, so that, that's really talking about being wary and using, applying the wisdom. All right? And every good work, trust thy own soul. See? And if you know you're doing the right thing, then you can have trust and faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh that he's guiding you the right way. All right, 24th verse in closing. 
He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment, and he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. You see? That's what keeps us. That's ensuring that we, we get the victory. Believing in the Lord, and what did the Lord command? Go out on the highways and hedges and bid them to the marriage. You know, Apostle Paul said that we, you know, we ought to establish the law. So we do teach what is written in the law. We also teach the full scope of it that we're in the flesh, so we can't keep the law perfect. Hence why we're in captivity. And on top of that, this world pushes out a wicked vibration that's against the law. So it's impossible to keep the laws perfect. And even when it was possible, we still went off in the king in our in the former days of the of the temple. You know, that was the you know, the, the prelude to the kingdom, you know, the house of David, so on and so forth. Even then, we still went off. So we need mercy. We need the Lord to guide us. We need the Rechak Wadash, man, which is sent from on high. All right. He that trusteth in him shall fear it never the worse. You see? So that's why we want to trust in the Lord and not trust in this wicked kingdom. Babylon, the great America, modern Egypt, Edom. All right, the so-called white man system. So with that, all praise, glory, and honor be unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechak Wadash. Lord's will is edifying, and Lord's will I catch up on the next one. Shalom.